General Beagle. Hey, Beagles. How's it? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our historic, uh, beautiful State House. Uh, we are, are celebrating a, a great year that we, we see coming, having made our way almost through the pandemic. We have more to go, but we have communicated, collaborated, cooperated with, with one another across every sector of our society, and we're making great progress. And today we are, we are here to celebrate a part of our population, and that's our, our military. Uh, South Carolina has a great military tra tradition. There's no state with a greater military tradition. We have eight major military bases in our state. Uh, our militia goes way back to the beginning with Francis Marion, as you recall. Uh, the Coast Guard is, is grouping up, and we rely on our military, both active and reservists. Uh, and retirees in many, many ways. In fact, we, we know that it's the retired military people that add so much to the strength of our state, and that's why we honor their presence and are seeking to have more of them here. We have uh, over 420, 406,000 veterans in our state. Uh, we have about, I think it's 55, a thousand active duty and about 38,000 children. And it is those children here that we are here to celebrate today. General? Thank you. Thank you, Governor. I'm Will Grimsley. I'm Secretary of Veterans Affairs, and we appreciate you all being here today. I'm, uh, in addition to being a retired military officer who has two sons of my own, so military kids by definition, I'm also a military kid. So as we were talking about, uh, I moved, I think, 14 times in my first 18 years, six of those in my, from kindergarten through 12th grade, and twice in the middle of school years. So I feel your pain. I understand exactly how you, uh, how you have to adapt and the things with which you have to deal, and, and I appreciate it. Um, so next to family, the biggest touchstone most of us have, the foundation on which we build when we move in our local communities, are very often our schools. That's where we find and make friends. That's where we find and uh, grow to love or listen to counselors and teachers. Very often we find a lifelong mentor there. And it's extraordinarily important that we continue to reinforce that relationship of our kids to highly effective schools. And that's what we're really here to talk about today, military kids and how they can relate to schools. And I'd like to take just a moment to explain, for those of you who aren't familiar, this notion of Purple Star Schools. So the Military Child Education Coalition is a nonprofit organization based in Texas that began specifically about military kids and how do we enhance their lives, how do we help create uh, better systems that really support them over time. It's an extraordinarily powerful group. I'm friends with the founder of it, Dr. Mary Keller, and, and a lot of people contribute to this over time because it is so important. And the things they have been able to bring forward on behalf of our kids is unbelievable. And where we are today versus 20 years ago it is pretty remarkable. And all you have to do is look around at these military kids and realize that through their diversity, their perseverance, their being dedicated to family, community, school, and the future of the nation is the future of the nation's quite, quite bright. And so thank you all for being here. You're, you're really important to who we are and, and what we're trying to do. And so we have existing programs uh, across various school districts, excuse me, Purple Star districts in the state up here. Our goal is to proliferate this, to grow it across the state, to take advantage of the great educational opportunities in the state, but also to recognize that we have military kids in every school district in the state, not just those surrounding the active duty installations. We have a superb, large National Guard, and we have a reserve component, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, Space Force people who live and work in our communities around South Carolina. So let's, let's grow this. Let's get it bigger out there. And so Purple Star Schools, what do they do? 
They provide this opportunity to create a ready path through peer-to-peer -peer counseling, through awareness in schools, through, through trained counselors and staff members to really bring focus on military kids, ease the transitions, but most importantly, recognize the challenges that face our military kids every day as they're in school. And especially when their mothers and fathers, loved ones are gone, deployed away in service in state or out of state, you name it, that, that's what they do. And they also create opportunities to hold celebrations and other things. So we really want to be able to grow this. And what we want to do is uh, take advantage of the school districts and the great education system we have, and that's led by the lady I'm honored to introduce now, our chief education officer and a strong, ardent, lifelong supporter of military and veterans, Superintendent Molly Spearman. Thank you, General. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, General. South Carolina is a proud military state that's home to some of the finest installations in the country. We have over 16,500 military connected students who are actually students in our schools. And in our schools, with this vast majority of them having parents who are on active duty. In 2019, I was very honored, had heard about this program, and we brought it to South Carolina and uh, have staff at the department who work on this with school districts to make sure that we recognize the school's significant commitment to supporting military families and students of servicemen and women. These schools and districts here in Aiken County was our first, Richland II, uh, close behind, and you see the others that are joining there have been designated, that means that they have met specific requirements, targeted training, and implemented programs and resources designed to support the unique uh, situations facing military students. And I also want to point out that they also have a person designated at the school as the contact person for all military families. It has been, uh, it's been a huge uh, endeavor, one that we're so proud of, and our goal is to make sure that every military connected child has the support and resources offered by not only these Purple Star schools and districts, but we hope soon more schools in South Carolina. And it would be great to have every school involved because we have such a broad array of National Guard servicemen, reservemen, not only at the installations, but all across our state. Governor, we thank you so much for your support. Secretary Grimsley, Deputy Adjutant Jones, thank you for your work. General Beagle, General, thank you all so much for your service to our country. And please know that our goal in South Carolina schools, we call it the profile of the graduate, and that is to have students ready for success in college, career, but a big word, citizenship. We're growing great citizens, and we're proud that we also honor all of our high school students when they are enlisting in the military or going to a military academy. We honor them at their graduation with a red, white, and blue military cord. We're proud of their service, and we thank you, and we want to see this program grow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, I'm Brigadier General Jeff Jones, the Deputy Adjutant General of South Carolina. On behalf of the Adjutant General, uh, Major General Van McCarty, and on behalf of our great partners at Fort Jackson and, and Brigadier General Beagle, uh, I would like to first start by thanking the Governor, the Legislature, uh, Secretary Grimsley and Superintendent Spearman, and all of our partners uh, for all that you do to support our military and our families in South Carolina. But today we gather to recognize our most precious and our most resilient members of the whole entire military team. And that is, or those are, uh, our military children. And you see them here today. Don't they look great? You know, with an estimated 4 million military-connected children in America, and in the wake of the global war on terror, the longest war in our country's history, uh, the generations of children, military children, have served uh, probably, I would say, if not the, the most, they have been uh, the most challenged, I would say, uh, of, of previous generations for what, what they've been through. As Secretary Grimsley and Superintendent Spearman alluded to, military children face a myriad 
of, of, of challenges, uh, both emotional and academic, uh, uh, in their lives as they relocate many times, so they adjust uh, to new schools, uh, they adjust uh, to new homes. Uh, so they are, as I say, the most resilient uh, of us all. And there are many children, like my daughter Isabel here, that, that, that had to cope with the emotional demands that came with facing deployments. And I think it's important to also recognize, especially uh, those children uh, of, of combat veterans uh, who had to experience the trauma associated with witnessing a parent who was hurt in combat and came home with wounds both hidden uh, and visible. Truly, uh, they are they're extremely uh, resilient. Make no mistake, our military children represent the best of us. And through programs such as the Purple Star Schools, we as a community and we as a state have the opportunity to positively impact uh, the, the, the social, uh, the emotional, and the academic development uh, of these students while ensuring that the families are connected uh, to the communities. And, and we can do that through knowledge sharing, we can do that through networking, and we can do that through creating a uh, culture of competency amongst our state stakeholders. Let's not forget that our military children we see today are our leaders tomorrow. And so it's our responsibility to make sure that we prepare them, and it's our responsibility to sure that make sure that they are connected along with their parents to the schools that they attend and the communities in which they live. And there's no doubt in my mind with the Team South Carolina uh, that we have uh, and what is being done with, with our great partners the Department of Veteran Affairs, the Department of Edu Education, that we will be successful in this endeavor. On behalf of, of, of all components, all soldiers, all family members, and all children. Again, thank you for what you do to support us. There is no greater honor than serving our country, but there's no better place to do it in South Carolina. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we say what we mean, and we mean what we say, and we like to make it official. So this is the State of South Carolina Governor's Proclamation. Whereas in 1986, former Defense Secretary Casper Weinberger designated the month of April as the month of the military child, an opportunity to recognize the contributions and personal sacrifices of our, mili our military children make in support of the armed forces of the United States of America while their parents serve our nation. And whereas military children are a source of pride, earning our appreciation for the significant contributions they make in our schools, our communities, and throughout our state, despite prolonged and repeated absences by one or both parents. And whereas, because the average military student faces transition challenges more than twice during high school, and most military children will attend six to nine different school systems throughout their lives, from kindergarten through 12th grade, the Military Interstate Children's Compact Commission is committed to resolving the educational tr transition issues that are faced by these children and their families, ensuring that they are afforded the same opportunities for educational success as other children and are not delayed in achieving their educational goals. And whereas the commitment to educational quality for military and veteran connected children in South Carolina is a team effort among the South Carolina Department of Education, the South Carolina Military Interstate Children's Compact Commission, the South Carolina Department of Veterans Affairs, the South Carolina Military Base Task Force, the South Carolina National Guard, and the Child, the Military Child Education Coalition. And whereas the Purple Star Program has grown into a national initiative that recognizes schools and districts, including nine school districts in South Carolina that adopt a set of criteria to ease the transition to new schools and communities for military children and enhance their education experiences. And whereas with the theme Purple Star Schools, the 2021 observance, of the month of the military child provides an opportunity to pay tribute 
to the nearly 38,000 military children in South Carolina who, through their strength and resiliency, are the heart and soul of the military family. Now, therefore, I, Henry McMaster, governor of the great state of South Carolina, do hereby proclaim April 2021 the month of the military child and encourage all South Carolinians to recognize the duty we have to support these military children and their families and also encourage all school districts with children of active duty reserve or National Guard families to become Purple Star schools to better understand and meet the needs of the military children across our state to honor the courage and sacrifice of our military children who have faithfully uphold the American spirit and to remember that when the parents serve in the military, their children serve as well. Signed by me, your proud, happy governor, Henry McMaster, on behalf of 5.2 million proud, happy South Carolinians who love our military. General. Does anyone, anyone have a question? Going, going. Thank you very much.